So just to let you know, one lucky commenter on this video is going to get a free shirt from myaudionerds.com. So make sure you leave a comment and you'll get a free t-shirt. Also remember, at any time, you can visit helpmedevon.com to get some of our vocal templates and presets to support this channel. Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Devon Toro, and welcome to another Help Me Devon tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon tutorial, I'll be showing you guys, or giving you guys, a basic understanding of the knobs on your reverb. Some knobs that you see on your reverb that are commonly used uh, from a language standpoint on other reverbs as well. So that when you approach these reverbs, you don't feel so taken aback, or afraid, or better yet, if you have an understanding of what these knobs do, I promise you, when you approach other reverbs, or your own reverb, you'll have, or better yet, you'll make better decisions decisions in that regard. So let's get right to it. So today's reverb that we'll be using for an example is a very popular and inexpensive reverb, but still of great quality in my personal opinion, is the Valhalla Vintage Verge. I love this verb a lot. Off the strength of, it has these color settings where it allows me to go from 1970s to 1980s to 2000s, or now, I guess you can say. Basically, it goes from a darker standpoint to a brighter standpoint in some regards. I know we can argue about that later. But let's stick to a few specific knobs that are super common and give you a basic understanding of them all. The first knob that we're gonna dive into is the decay knob. And basically what the decay knob does is, when you see it on other reverbs, you may see it in two different names. You may see the word decay, or you may see the word reverb time. And basically, it's just that. It's basically saying, hey, well, how long do you want this reverb to last? And that's a big deal when it comes to time. Think about it like this. If you have a reverb time or decay time that is shorter, then basically that tail of the reverb is going to end sooner. Uh, if you have a uh, one that is longer, say four seconds, then you're going to get a reverb time or effect that is longer. The tail is going to be a lot longer. And this is going to make a big difference and you have to make a decision in this because if you have really big reverb time, say for instance on a vocal uh, that's running throughout the entire song, you're going to notice that you're going to lose some fidelity in that vocal. Some of those frequencies are going to get masked and basically taken away because that reverb is consuming it. As opposed to taking a shorter reverb time or creating a shorter reverb time, you'll notice that that vocal still retain some of that quality and fidelity and it doesn't muddy up the entire mix so much. Think about it. If a reverb time is taking up four seconds of an entire song, one moment, that will cloud and blend and compete with other frequencies. So it's very important when you're in your mix or when you're picking your reverb time or decay to make sure that you're being mindful that uh, long reverb times can affect your mix negatively. Granted, it can be stylistic, but just know that be careful on that and if it's taking up too much of your mix, be honest with yourself. So I'll show you an example. So I'm going to play it with the four seconds uh, and, or basically, you know what, let's exaggerate. Let's play it with a seven second decay time. And then I'm going to take it all the way down to like a 0.96. Listen to this. I want to be a part of your new story. I'm not worried about the chapter before me. I don't even see an end in what we have. So when you listen to that, it's consuming a lot. And that within a mix is going to consume a lot of frequencies. And it's going to cause a lot of clouding and muddiness. Let's bring it down some. I want to be a part of your new story. I'm not worried about the chapter before me. I don't even see an end in what we have. So every time we link, I get a feeling we ain't sinking. And you hear that. That vocal got uh, brighter. The fidelity was there. But we still got that effect of the reverb and that feeling. Granted, we can go up a little bit more on the reverb time. But I just want to show you a huge difference between long reverb times and faster reverb times and what they can do. Granted, long Long reverb times can be really dope if you're doing something from a stylistic standpoint of trying to create a specific type of effect. The next knob that we're going to look at is pre-delay. And basically what pre-delay is, and you will probably see this on a lot of different reverbs, is you telling the actual reverb, hey, I want you to take some time before you actually add that reverb sound. Now you may be saying, what is the point of that? Why does that make sense? Well. Basically, if you have a shorter pre-delay, that reverb is going to instantly be on top of that sound. That reverb is instantly going to engage. It's going to be seamless. It's going to be right on top of each other. Now, if you do a pre-delay that is longer in seconds, basically, it's going to let that initial sound to cut through first, and then the reverb will attach itself 
after. How this can be very effective and powerful to you is, say for instance, you put on a reverb and it's taking that fidelity out of the vocal. Or you say to yourself, wow, I really want a little bit of that clarity to kind of cut through before that reverb comes and takes it um, and really just takes some of those things away from it. Granted, it might sound good, but when it comes to your mix, you may want that initial transient moment of the vocal or the piano or whatever instrument to really shine through before the reverb attaches itself to it. I'll show you an example of that. And this is the pre-delay knob. Okay, so let's put the pre-delay to absolutely zero, meaning when I press play, this pre-delay, or excuse me, this reverb is going to instantly be right on top of the vocal sound. Check this out. I want to be a part of your new story. I'm not worried about the chapter before me. So it's right on top of the sound source. Now let's take the pre-delay and back it way off, meaning let's make the pre-delay time longer. Check this out. I want to be a part of your new story. I'm not worried about the chapter before me. So you hear it. Those echoes are happening, or excuse me, that reverb is happening a little later. It's taking a second, cutting through, and then the reverb is coming in right after, or a little bit of time after, depending on how long you do it. This is very powerful. Now let me show you a more practical situation where I'm going to play it for you in a way that it cuts through, but at the same time, the reverb is still there because that feels a little unnatural as far as how it ping pongs off of it because it's such a slow pre-delay. So check this out. Let's find this nice sweet spot. I want to be a part of your new story. I'm not worried about the chapter before me. I don't even see an end in what we have. So every time we link, I get a feeling we ain't sinking. So right there, I get a little bit of the impression. Of course, I'm exaggerating the sound. I'm getting an impression of the vocal originally, and then I'm getting that reverb sound um, coming a little bit after. And this is something that you do to taste. Every song is different, and it's not always uh, 50 milliseconds is what, what we have it on right now. It's it's really a place where you find that balance between the two. But at least you understand what that pre-delay knob is doing. If you feel like that reverb is really taking something from it, try your pre-delay to get some of that initial transient information of the sound source back into the sound. The next thing we're going to move on to is something called damping. And basically, uh, when it comes to dampening or damping, when you see it on a reverb, it's a very interesting way of really processing the color of the reverb. Think about it like this. If I roll off the high end of the reverb, it's going to sound darker. If I roll off the low end of the reverb, it's going to sound brighter. And there's a lot of different ways that you can alternate and create this color. Sometimes you want a warmer reverb. Sometimes you want a brighter reverb. Well, this is a good place to start when it comes to the damping. This is how you can make that decision of what is that color that I'm looking for out of my reverb. If Do I want something warmer? Do I want something darker? So let me explain it to you. All right. So in the Valhalla Vintage Verb, it does it very interesting. At the top is the high end. At the bottom is the bass. Right here where it says high frequency, it's allowing you or asking you, hey, where do you want our shelf to begin? So basically I can say, hey, I want the shelf or the cut to begin at 10,000 hertz. Right here, as you can see, it's basically saying I'm gonna cut negative 24 dB uh, above 10,000 hertz. So anything above 10,000 hertz is going to get cut 24 dB. It's gonna be cut, all right? So what is this gonna sound like? If I turn it all the way to 20,000, it's basically doing nothing to the high end, right? Or basically it's cutting everything over 20,000 hertz, which your ear probably won't even be able to hear. But let's just say for the sake of this tutorial, over 20,000 hertz, it's not cutting anything. Thus, you should get a pretty bright reverb. Check this out. I want to be a part of your new story. I'm not worried about the chapter before me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this knob all the way over like this and tell me if you start to get a sense of, wow, it's getting darker as far as the reverb sound. I want to be a part of your new story. I'm not worried about the chapter before me. I don't even see an end in what we have. So every time we link, I get a feeling we ain't sinking. And what I you notice is the high end started to go away as we move that shelf down, 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 down. And it's cutting 24 dB. So that is it dampening that top end sound. That's what we told it to do. So now I have a particularly warmer reverb in that regard because I'm cutting it back. If I wanted it brighter, I'd cut it or basically take that high cut off so that it could shine, that top of the reverb can shine, okay? 
So that's basically what I did. So sometimes I'll leave it at like that 6,000 hertz so that I can get a little bit of my high end unaffected, but I want my mid-range frequencies to have that reverb sound there. Once again, this is a color taste. If you feel like your reverb is too bright, try dampening uh, the high end, meaning basically just cutting off some of that high end frequency. And this is the way you could do it in the Vintage for Holiver. The other thing is the bass. And this is this can be somewhat confusing if you're a new a beginner, uh, but I'll explain it like this. You see this little thing that says 1.5x? Well, basically what this is saying is, hey, I'm gonna say 1.5 times whatever the decay time is. So in this case, let's say the decay time is, and I'm pretty bad at math, I'm kidding, four times 1.5 equals six. So basically this rumor right here is going to be six seconds. What does this mean? What's gonna happen is the frequency that I've that I've selected as far as 700 hertz, I'm saying, hey, 700 hertz, what I want you to do is I want you to ring out longer than this actual decay. What I want is I want 700 hertz to ring out for six seconds, AKA 1.5 times four. So if I decided that I wanted to put this at four X, essentially what I'm saying is four times four, which would be 16. Now, what that's gonna say is basically I'm asking the reverb, yo, I want the bass frequency of 700 hertz to ring out for 16 seconds. Now, of course, this is extreme. I, I personally, I'm not a fan of doing that, but I'm just showing you this exaggerated format so that you can get an idea of what this means. Nothing better than actually showing you what this actually means though. Let's take a look and try it out. So. Let's put leave it at 700 hertz. So that means that we're gonna get this warmth sound to ring out for a very long time. So let's put this warmth sound to ring out for about 16 seconds. So 16 seconds after I stop it, you're gonna notice that this reverb at 700 hertz of the reverb is gonna ring out. Check this out. I wanna be a part of your... You hear that thing still ringing out? Now, how about we take this multiplier and bring it down to one? So basically what I'm telling this is that, hey, at 700 hertz, I want you to only ring out four seconds. Pretty much the same as the decay. Check this out. I wanna be a part of your new and it's done, four seconds. So that's basically what this is doing. And you can pick any frequency that you want to ring out longer than the actual decay. So you could even have the bottom end ring out lower. Uh, so what you could do is say, for instance, I would do it like four seconds, excuse me on that lower. Basically I would say like a four times uh, a three on this and let's see what it sounds like. So what I'll do is I'll keep it like this and then I'll ring this Base multiplier down and notice what it does. I wanna be a part of your new As you can see, as I bring it, I wanna be a sorry. As I bring it down, it basically is a, a shorter decay time at that particular frequency range that I've requested. Now there may be a little bit of an advanced trick for some people. Uh, I don't see that on a lot of different uh, reverb plugins, but this is one that I just found fascinating on the Valhalla Vintage Verb that I thought was really cool. So it can be stylistic. There's a lot of reasons why you would use it. You just have to take your pick on why you would want to use that base frequency multiplier and let one frequency ring out more than uh, the other frequencies in the actual thing. The last thing I'm gonna show you is the EQ section on a reverb plugin. And it's very similar, I guess you could say, if you're thinking about dampening as far as being able to EQ your reverb. But what this EQ section on this reverb particularly does is it EQs the output. So it's an overall uh, 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 EQ of the entire sound. And there is a difference in that. So as opposed to saying, well, I'm doing this from a color standpoint, this EQ that you have on the very, very end or this output EQ is really uh, EQing the the true output of the sound. And this comes in handy when it comes to you throwing a reverb directly on a sound source and literally rolling off exactly what's coming out. So I don't want you to get confused with dampening and the actual EQ. They're very similar and they can do similar things, but there is a slight difference when you see dampening versus EQ on an actual reverb plugin. Don't worry, if you see EQ on a reverb plugin, just know I'm about to show you what it means and how to go about it. So 
All this does is it says, hey, I have all this processing on me uh, and I'm coming out. Do you want me to tailor off or take off some of my low end or high end or both? And that's basically what this is. I do not want you to get tied up on this because this is as simple as it gets when it comes to reverb plugins. Check this out. Listen to the low end. I want to be a part of your new story I'm not worried about the chapter before me I don't even see an ending of what we have As you heard, you see the low end completely was taken out of the entire reverb or affected signal. Now, what does the high end do? You guessed it. It's a high cut. So I'm going to start from the very top and bring it all the way down. You're going to notice it gets darker and darker. I want to be a part of your new story I'm not worried about the chapter before me I don't even see an ending of what we have so Every time we link, I get a feeling we in sync So that's basically what that does. Basically, the high cut is going to cut off some of basically the high frequencies in your reverb and the low cut is going to take off the low frequencies in your reverb. Now, this can be very powerful when it comes to not muddying up your mix when you say to yourself, I hear the reverb, but the low end of that reverb is kind of interfering with my bass frequencies and things of that nature. Well, it could be a good rule of thumb to create a low cut and basically take off some of that low end so it doesn't interfere with your main stuff or the rest of the mix. That also works for the high end. Sometimes that high end of the reverb, the reverb may be too bright and feels dissonant from the entire song. It may feel like that space isn't correct and that's something that you need to pay attention to more and more when you actually doing your mixes or using your reverb sometimes a bright reverb isn't right for the song and that can be tailored or fixed or changed with adding a high cut to the actual reverb sound and bringing that thing down now granted there are other bells and whistles on this reverb but i really just wanted to go over the basic ones the ones that i feel like are common that you're going to see over and over again sure you see shape diffusion and modulation, but I'll explain that in a more advanced tutorial, maybe sometime later, if you want it in the comments below. So I hope that was helpful. That was my tutorial on a basic understanding of the knobs on a reverb. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Make sure you also follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram. And also make sure you go on over to helpmedevon.com at any time for some of our vocal chains, templates, um, and presets. Uh, just for you and also follow us on our discord community I'll leave a link in the description below for that where there are a bunch of aspiring engineers like yourself So I hope that was helpful until next time you guys